Okay, in this video we're going to go over a feature in the Holly EFI software that uh, is convenient if you use it sparingly, uh, but will also make you run around in circles and can cause all kinds of problems. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you look at the analytics for this channel, uh, basically all of the traffic, all of the views, all of the search terms are all start with Holly EFI or Holly Terminator X. So uh, I guess that's what you guys want to see. So. We'll try and do some more videos. So with that being said, if there's anything in particular that you want to see, um, let me know. We can try and make a video of it. Got a dyno, so it's pretty easy to uh, you know kind of show you what's going on and uh, make a video and explain you know whatever it is that you want to know. So comment uh, below, and uh, we'll see what we can make. Okay, this is a new computer. I haven't loaded much of my Holly stuff on here yet, so we're just going to use a base map. Um, this basically is just saying uh, don't blow yourself up, so just click OK. Um, we'll just use the LS map since that's what a majority of people are using. And the very first thing that I do in every load file, regardless of what I'm doing, is make sure that our load sensing is on VE based. Um, every now and then you'll see some people using speed density, um, which I don't like with the Holly system. Um, that's a whole video for itself though, so if that's something you're interested in knowing, why I feel that way, just comment below and I can make another video on that. So in this video, we are going to be talking about uh, the smoothing feature. Um, it can be super convenient um, and it can also make you run around in circles for hours. Um, I've seen people use my dyno that are just making changes and making changes and then just wiping them right back out again. So I'm going to show you a few ways to uh, make sure it's doing what you want it to do and then how to protect yourself before you uh, ruin your life. So if you've been tuning for a while, this might not uh, maybe apply to you so much. If you're new to it, um, you probably may or may not even know that you basically can look at the fuel curve two ways, uh, numerically or here with the graph. Um, with I think they call it heat mapping, where you have your different colors for your different like uh, numerical values makes it nice to see. So like, say we accidentally change that to 40, like it, it yells at us and lets us know. Um, but also uh, looking at the fuel graph um, lets you know basically how the car is going to be running. Um, let's see, I'm sure this is open. This is a car that was tuned on another system, but you can see how this is all jagged and looks all, all rough. Um, this was tuned in another shop and came here. Um, so this is what we're trying to avoid. Um, but on the other hand, as pretty and good as this looks, this isn't always how an engine's going to run. Um, so sometimes when you make your changes, it, it starts to get a little wavy. And uh, the smooth feature will take care of that, but sometimes it, uh, like I said, it'll wipe out what you do. So let's take a look. All right, so if you're getting ready to make your changes to your fuel cable, whether this is part throttle, full throttle, whatever, um, if this was live and connected to a car down here where it says sensors, uh, we would have real-time data here. Um, let's see if we go to majority of them. We have closed loop compensation right here. Um, and basically that's going to be the difference from where we're at on our fueling versus where we want it to be. Um, so you can either look at it here or you can do it through a data log. Um, if you go up to data log, um, obviously if you click on open data log, that's how you would open a log. Um, but this activate overlay, a lot of people don't know about. Um, Again, the whole data log inside of this could be a separate video, but um, so if we open up this log down here um, and we look over here at our closed loop comp, um, you can see as I scroll the cursor around, negative seven, negative nine, negative six, um, there's some positive numbers in there. Um, so that's basically what we're trying to fix. And with the activate overlay, um, you can see our cursor is right here in the map. So if we go into the fuel table, I'm sorry, it's right there in the data log. So if we go to the fuel table, um, it gives us this bubble, uh, shows us exactly where we're at. Um, so if we move this over here and then go back over here, uh, now, we're, now we're up here. So this makes it quick and easy to kind of go through all of your cells and, and basically tune the car without relying on the self-tuning, um, that's how you manually do it. Um, I could talk for hours on my thoughts on the self-tuning and the way that that is kind of promoted is 
basically the cartoons itself, um, but we'll get into that another day. Um, so for the time being, and to show you an example, let's say we're on a steady state dyno, we're holding the cart 3000 RPM, which is basically going to be these load cells. Um, and let's say we're just going to increase load, and as we do it, I'm going to move some fueling around. And I'm going to intentionally make this crude just to show you an example. Um, now when you have a cell highlighted, if you hold down control um, and you hit the plus or minus keys, you can change those values. And then the arrow keys will make um, like much larger jumps. I don't ever use those. I just use up and down. Um, so let's say we're going to go up here, um, go up some more, and go down on fuel. Um, and again, let's say for the sake of conversation, that this is what the data log or the live tuning is showing us that we need to make for fueling adjustments. Um, this is really rough, but it's just for demonstration purposes. And then you can also highlight multiple cells and then make the same changes. Or if you just highlight cells, you can just type the value and hit enter and it'll change all of them. And then, uh... All right, so we've made a bunch of changes in our 3000 RPM breakpoint. So now if we go here to the fuel graph, we can see it looks really bad and we need to smooth this out. Um, now they give you the smooth all feature which again works well when you need situationally but uh, sometimes it doesn't so if we go back to the fuel cell our fuel base fuel um, a couple of things to note here is that we can our windows keys will work so if we hit 50 here and then we just simply hit control z it'll go back to the way that it was um, now the control z feature does not work when you use the smoothing. So if you smooth the map, it didn't do what you wanted it to do, you can't go back. Um, so what I recommend doing is highlighting, so after you make your changes, before you hit smooth, I'm gonna highlight the whole map. I'm gonna hit Control C to copy it. And then just gonna click somewhere on the map to unhighlight it. Now we can go back to our fuel graph. Um, so now we're going to hit the smooth all feature and just watch what it does. It just entirely wiped out everything that we just did. So if you just spent 30 minutes going through numerous um, cells, different RPM points, different load points, and then you hit that button and you wiped out everything, you're going to be pretty upset about it. Um, so I'll show you how we can correct this. So if we go back to the base fuel table, we highlight everything now that we've copied it previously. So we just hit control V at this point. And you can see it populates everything with the old data. Now we can go back to fuel graph and uh, it's all messed up again. So I've kind of done this enough now where I know when it's gonna over overcorrect and not do what I want it to do. Um, but occasionally I'll get into a situation where I'm not real sure. Um, so again, I'll copy everything, hit the smooth all, and then see what it did. Now let's assume that it, it we don't like what it did and we need to smooth this out manually. Um, there's a few ways you can do it. Um, what I wouldn't recommend doing in this situation is if you highlight an area and you right click on it, um, you can go to fill row values or fill column values. Um, the row values is basically going to smooth everything left to right. Um, and then the column values is going to go up and down. And it doesn't in like a linear fashion. Um, so if we do, say, if we put 50 here and 100 here, if we highlight this, right click, fill column values, you can see it just linearizes everything um, and it does the exact same thing if you do a horizontal um, so again situationally that works out pretty well but for this and this is what you're going to see more so like in this area of the map your part throttle and your cruising um, so if we go back to the fuel graph if you click somewhere on the map 
you can see this little green dot. And if I just use the arrow keys, it'll move around. Um, so what we want to do is want to get rid of these like kind of peaks and valleys. Um, but at the same time, you don't want to smooth it out so much that you're right back to where you started. Um, so if you put this green dot here on this, this big peak and we hold down the control key and we hit down, we can bring that value down and then go to the next cell over, hold control. We can bump it up a little bit and just let go of the control key to move your cursor. Um, and then the first few times you do this, you're probably going to hold control at the wrong time and all that good stuff. But um, so you see, like right now, we have overlapping values. So you never want to do that. So, um, and again, you can see if I keep going up here, even though I'm hitting up on the cursor, it's, it's going down because those values are, are underneath. So if I hold down control, oh, wrong one. So you can't even see it brings it up. You can kind of, I'm not trying to make this pretty and spend a, make you sit here for four hours watching it, but so you get the idea. Now there's, there's a million different ways that you can do this. So like say we're 104, 105, 110, like we can maybe bump this up to like 108 and uh, kind of manually smooth it that way. But I'm real big into doing it visually um, and the way I've done it on a lot of other systems like this one for so long is, um, you know, this map looks pretty, pretty crude. So you can come through on here and um, just manually adjust these. Um, and once you get used to doing it this way, it's hard to go back to the numerical value and you just feel like you're doing a bunch of math and pushing a bunch of extra buttons. Um, as to where with this, you know, click on a point. And this just makes it really nice, you know, for like a, a turbo car where you want to build a VE table where it's rolling into boost. Um, you know, so it looks something like this. It rolls in nice and smooth. Um, this one's all messed up from using it as an example for something similar in, in this software. Um, So now with all that being said, since this is really jacked up, this would be out if you're out in left field. Um, you can hit smooth all there. And again, it basically wiped out everything that we did. So maybe that's not a great example. Um, let's say we're going to build a fuel curve for like a turbo car. Um, so this one's probably not going to be running this high in VE at this low of an RPM. So let's just hit like 90, uh, let's see, 105. Uh, these are just kind of arbitrary numbers for an example again. Um, so you can see back here, like, it's, that's just not how we're going to want it to work. Um, so again, since we're not sure exactly what it's going to do, control C, come back to the fuel graph, hit smooth all, and it did a much better job that time. It actually kept our, our shape of what we were going for. Um, so that's much better. Um, and the other thing is if you hit smooth all once, like in that example, it'll usually kind of give you some something realistic to work with but the more you if you hit it again it, it kind of and eventually if you just keep hitting it you can wipe it out altogether um, so just be careful with that and basically just to recap um, if we make our changes just a few percent at a time 
like the closed loop fueling is telling us or the air fuel difference between what we want it to be and what it actually is if you have closed loop turned off. Go to the fuel graph. We can see if we hit smooth all, it wipes out everything that we did. So that's what we're trying to avoid. Um, that's just wasting a whole bunch of time. And if you use your control and up and down, you can visually see what you're doing, but manually make all of your changes. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Um, hopefully you learned something. Um, I know when I get into new software I'm not familiar with, um, the functionality of the computer and the, you know, the terminology of how do I change this or that, it's usually pretty straightforward, but um, learning the ins and outs of the dumb stuff like this um, can be kind of tiresome and frustrating until you get the hang of it. Um, so hopefully this will save you some time. Assuming uh, you like this type of content, especially with the Holly stuff, uh, make sure you subscribe. And if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see a video of, uh, let me know below and uh, I'll see what I can do. Um, for whatever reason, I find this stuff kind of like fun and enjoyable and um, it helps other people out. So it's a uh, win-win. So um, I guess I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.